Hello, welcome to The Maths Kitchen. I've had a request to do a video on dividing fractions, so I'm gonna do that. But to be able to divide fractions, you really need to be able to multiply fractions. So in this video, I'm gonna be looking at multiplying fractions, and then next week, I'll put up a video on dividing fractions. Okay, so before we jump straight into multiplying a fraction by a fraction, we're going to look at what happens when you multiply a whole number by a fraction. Let's say I ask you to do 28 times a half. You might be able to do that, but you might well find that quite difficult. It, it certainly doesn't sound that easy, okay? Well, 28 times a half means you have 28 halves. 28 lots of a half. So you could count up in halves until you have 28 of them. So half, one, one and a half, two, and so on, until you've done that 28 times. And you'll end up with an answer of 14. Now, that's okay, but there's an easier way. I think it's a big help if you think of times or multiply as meaning of, okay? So when you see times, you can just replace that with of. So in this example, instead of thinking of it as a half times 28, you can instead think of it as a half of 28. And to find a half of something, you just divide by two. So a half of 28 is 14. Similarly, you can think of a half times 100 as a half of 100, or a third times 83 as a third of 83. And this works because when you think of it as a half of something, well, you know that to find a half of something means to divide by two. To find a half of something, you divide by two. And in fact, you can think of a fraction as division. A half means one divided by two. That's what the line and the two underneath it mean. Divide by two. Similarly, you could think of four fifths as four divided by five. The fractions and divisions are two sides of the same coin. They are the same thing. It's just that we tend to think of them differently and maybe we use them in different contexts, okay? So fractions and division, they are the same thing. So that's the first thing. To find a half of something, you divide by two. To find a fifth of something, you would divide by five. To find a twelfth of something, you would divide by 12, and so on, right? Hopefully you get the idea. Incidentally, actually, another useful thing is to remember that when you are multiplying things together, the order that you do it in doesn't matter, okay? Three times five is the same as five times three. Two times 10 is the same as 10 times two. So if, for example, you had something like 18 times a third, well, we, we know that we can think of it as 18 of a third, but that doesn't really make much sense. But if we swap the two numbers around, we now have a third of 18. And we know that to find a third of something, you divide by three. So a third of 18 is six. Okay, now we know how to multiply a fraction by a whole number, at least for fairly simple fractions, those with a one on top, a one for the numerator. I'll put three questions up. Pause the video, have a go yourself. Uh, I won't talk through the answers after, but I will display them on screen for you to check. Right, that's how to multiply a whole number by a fraction. But what about when we want to multiply two fractions together? Let's start with a half times a half. What would that be? Well, if we think of it as a half of a half, it makes a bit more sense. And as a maths teacher, and as we're talking about fractions, I feel obliged to talk about pizzas. So half of a half means cutting your half a pizza into another two halves. So one of those pieces will be a quarter. So half of a half is a quarter. Let me show you another example. This time we're gonna work out a half times a third. In other words, a half of a third. If we think of our pizza 
divide it into three parts. Each of those parts is one third of the whole pizza. And to find a half of a third, we can imagine those thirds being divided in two, because to find half of something, you divide it by two. So we end up with six pieces, or sixths. So half times a third is one sixth. What about half times a fifth? Well, in this case, we need to halve each of those fifths. And if we do that, we end up with 10 pieces, each one being one tenth of the pizza. So a half times a fifth is one tenth. How about one third times a fifth? Well, we need to split each of those fifths into three. And if we do that, we end up with fifteenths. So one third times one fifth is one fifteenth. If you look at all the answers we have so far, you can see a pattern emerging. The denominators are simply being multiplied together. The denominator is just the number on the bottom of the fraction. What isn't obvious from those examples is that actually you also have to multiply the numerators together. Okay, Numerator is just the numbers on the top of the fraction. So let's go through a couple of examples and I'll, then I'll give you a few to practice on your own. So the first one, 4 sevenths times 3 tenths. All we have to do is multiply the numerators together, 4 times 3, which is 12, and then multiply the denominators together, 7 times 10, which is 70. So 4 sevenths times 3 tenths is 12 seventieths. Now, that answer could be simplified, but that's for another video. All right, the last example, 5 sixths times 2 elevenths. We multiply the numerators together, so 5 times 2, and then we multiply the denominators together, so 6 times 11, which is 66. So 5 sixths times 2 elevenths is 10 66 which again could be simplified, but we will leave that for another day. That is how you multiply fractions together. Very straightforward, you multiply the numerators together and then you multiply the denominators together. Really easy, yeah? Um, I'll put three questions up here for you to have a practice and then we're done, okay? I'll see you in a second. Great, I hope you are able to do those. I hope you found it useful and I hope you are now able to multiply fractions together. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.